Well, hello, everybody. Here we are. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today. I see people are starting to pop in here. I am Anya Christianton uh, with Anugo, and I'm going to be your uh, hostess with the most as per usual. And joining me today is Ron Nancy and Leah Fellows. So you guys, in case you don't know where you are, we're hosting a webinar. It's called How to Create Urgency and Master Negotiation from OSCs to Sales. I think it's a very timely topic right now with so many buyers being on the edge, whether it's a good time to buy or not. So both Leah and uh, Roland are going to give you some solid strategies of how to convince your potential buyers that it is, in fact, the right time to purchase. Um, so you can walk away knowing exactly what to say to rebuttal some of those objections. So let me give you a quick introduction for our panelists today. So joining us is wonderful Leah Fellows. Leah is the owner of Blue Gypsy Inc. Blue Gypsy Inc. is the OSC um, uh, counselor training. Uh, and uh, Leah also does some uh, consulting as well. And joining us also is Roland. Roland's been on a couple of our webinars previously. You guys may have met him before. And of course, um, both Leah and Roland are also hosting Tropical Sales Retreat, which we're going to talk about um, a little bit more in a minute. But Roland is a published author now of Mastery of Selling for New Home Sales. And he's coming up with his brand new book, actually, which is right on topic, which is going to be Mastery of Negotiation, which he's going to be talking about today as well. And Roland is internationally known um, new home sales expert. So thank you so much for joining me today, both of you. And uh, Roland, I'll let you take it away. If you can share your screen with us, we'll go. Yep. Ahead. All right, perfect. Don't let me do that. And while Roland is doing that, um, you guys can use chat function to ask questions throughout the presentation. Um, we will uh, get to your questions probably at the end, um, or we may answer some as we go. I'll keep an eye on the chat. And uh, while Roland's getting that up, um, why didn't don't we... Fit. That that didn't sound so good, huh? <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> why it... don't you guys tell us where your... Um... Is it working or no? Is it not, you, you can't yes, see it? No, it oh, is working. Oh, okay, good. It. I, I, yes, I'm yes. trying to get it up. That's all I'm, that's all I'm going to say. It, it didn't come up. I love it. I can remember that's that. Awesome. Now. That was like my favorite moment of any webinar ever. I, I'm trying not to laugh out loud, but that was great. I've got my PowerPoint up. But anyway, oh, yay. But where yeah. is everybody from? Let's go back so, to that. Also, yeah. <laughs> if you want to in the chat, let us know if you are an OSC, have an OSC, or don't have an OSC. So you could write just write don't if that's all you want to do or say am or have and, and how do you spell osc no i'm just, I'm just ha, ha, ha. osc if you okay, please let me know oh don't have an osc am great okay Hi. dialing in have one am one great we've got oscs on good, good. lots of ams i like AM. that don't have one currently but looking to hire one next month yay even okay. better so perfect timing this is really great, great timing, great energy, great information to um, be able to help you guys out. So OSC, we've got them. Don't have one, but decided on deciding on benefits, value. Great. But well, we can also, Fred, we can talk about that if you want to talk to me about that. Yeah, yeah. All right. That, that's awesome. Shall I start scrolling through the deck and begin officially? But Go this is it. great. I'm, I'm, well, first of all, thank you for all the viewers for, for tuning in. I know quite a few people will also listen to this or watch this afterwards as well. So welcome to all of you uh, uh, afterwards. Uh, Anya is absolutely right. We, we were talking about a topic that we thought would be as current as we possibly could. And so creating urgency. So wh why now, both for the online sales counselors and for, for new home sales and leadership is so relevant. And then negotiation is back and I'm chuckling because I'm so darn old. It's about the fifth time in my life cycle as a, as a new home salesperson, sales director and, and sales coach that we've had to negotiate. You know, we, for the last four or five years, people would think we're crazy to even talk about it, but now it's back. So when I get to my program, I'm going to talk about some, some proven tips that work. Uh, everything that I teach and, and Lear and, and Anya, it's stuff that we've done ourselves. So it's sort of tried and tested, but in a time four or five years ago, whenever the last time we needed it was, and we aren't suggesting that you have to negotiate, 
we were just simply saying, if you're going to do it, do it well. You know, do, do, do it effectively where you create a win-win, you get the sale, the buyer feels good, and your company knows that you've protected margin as well. So we're not advocating you should or shouldn't do it. We're just saying if you're going to do anything, do it at the highest possible level. Make sense? All right. So I do, I really want to thank uh, Anya. You're, you're a trooper. You're, you're an industry icon at this point. You, you were the first to do podcasts, by the way, when I think, I, if I remember correctly, and people are like, what's a podcaster? And now everybody has a podcast. So I, I'm, Everybody I, I, has one. I highly yeah. recommend that everybody gets one. So. Yeah, so <laughs> whatever Anya does next, watch out, because we should copy her. She knows what's current. But, uh, you know, I, really, you and John Lee, he's, he's the mad professor genius behind Inugo and Formula Rending House. And you guys have the best app, the best team. I work with so many builders. I absolutely love what you do. And, and, and you make it really simple to work with you. You've, you've made it frictionless. So when somebody does whatever asset uh, facet uh, of, of design or, or, or in, you know, integration with digital media, you've made it so easy for the managers and directors to, to work with you. So hats off to both of you. Thank you very well, much. Thank you. No, we're very lucky to have you in the industry. Uh, this is pictures of me speaking around the country uh, when it comes to my part I love training it's what I am as an educator so I go all around the country and Canada and North America Canada as well um, going back there in fact for almost the whole of January uh, I'm booked over there in Alberta so here we are around the world there or around the country rather uh, my family there we go my, my lovely wife and son Max and a true passion is Max and his old 73 Mustang. So we go to car shows every weekend. So that's my why is to uh, is to get back and spend time with my beautiful family. It's like, it's like all of you. All right. Um, we have some freebies for you. This will make more sense by the end of it. I have an app that we've created. It's free to anybody, uh, any Anugo viewers here. So you just email me uh, for that. Once you've maybe heard me speak, you go, okay, that makes more sense to, to want that, but we're going to introduce it later. Sometimes you got to say what you're going to say, say it, and then say what you said, right? So I'm just going to bring it up a few times. Uh, my mastery of selling one free book today. Um, I'm running low on what I have behind me here, and I've got I've reordered a whole bunch of them, but they've been selling, thank goodness. So the first person that writes to me, Roland New Home Sales Plus, a new go free book, you will get a free book signed and sent your way. So uh, I had a whole bunch last time we did this. It was really, uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and thank you for the nice notes about that. The retreat, the retreat. Anya's going to be there. Leah's going to be there. Uh, look, Better Together is the theme and, and, and training is really the focus of what we're doing. Uh, there's 14 of us now, 14 amazing speakers. That may seem confusing, but please understand there's, there's actually three main tracks. So they're not all together at the same time, right? So uh, myself and Quint Leah's are doing sales training for new home salespeople with our new guest. Look at this. The great Myers Barnes, we chatted, he's going to join us as well. So you, you get to, to really work with some industry legends. Myers has written six books. Everyone knows him. Uh, and he's, he's going to be doing some workshops with us, uh, with the sales people. Leah is running the whole online sales counselor track with her team, right, Leah? And you can speak to that if you'd like. Let's go ahead and, and chat sure. a little bit about what, what your vision is there. Yeah, it's really exciting. We are actually, we'll have two days of online sales counselor training and um, tips and tricks and ways to up your game to level up as online sales counselors. So uh, joining me will be um, Heidi from Lasso. She's going to be doing a little bit of teaching. We're also going to have Alexis from group two who also works with OSCs and she's going to impart some great information. And also as, as another, just to bring in a, a third element, we have Lauren Loy from Lasso as well, who's also into meditation and energy work. So really kind of help with some of that work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So we're really going to be re-energizing, re-engaging all of these things and techniques to help us be better online sales counselors with the way the market is changing. And yes. just for those of you that don't know, I've been in the industry and in online sales for 16 years. So I've seen those swings as well. So yeah. Perfect. And, and look, every program is different. So if you are considering coming down, we'd love to have you join us. The hotel is literally on the beach. It's beautiful in the Gulf of Mexico uh, in Clearwater Beach. Uh, it's right on the beach. So all the breaks, we're going to go out for lunch uh, right on the, on the sand itself, the, the restaurants out there. We've got a, a luau on the second night, on the Thursday night. So it really, the idea is to come down and learn during the day, but re really relax in the evening and on your break. So, so it is important to get that balance. It's, it's a little bit more boutique-y, perhaps, 
perhaps in other programs is more bougie, I think would be the way to say it these days, more bougie. Uh, it's going to be more exclusive, more intimate. You'll get a lot more attention from all of your trainers than you might at some other, like not, not to knock other programs. That's not the idea at all, but just the way that it seems to work out. It, it really, um, it's more of a connection, quite frankly. And so the question uh, that, that the gentleman had about, should he even have an OSC? Well, you'd be right with Leah. You can chat with her. That's that's the idea. We have breakfast, lunches, dinner, or the, the, the party and everything. Uh, chair massages uh, so whatever you want out there it's there to relax but really connect and get your questions answered with experts who really know what they're talking about they're in the market to, today including Anya who's done the same thing and then we have the uh, sorry let me just scream I'm excited then we have the the, the the leadership portion which kicks off on the afternoon the second day uh, David Hagen is a Maxwell certified coach and so he's talking about that um, and and then we have um uh, we have other guests coming in, but then the next day it's marketing, uh, Anya and a few other companies talking about digital marketing. We've got Kimberly talking about traction, and then we're doing leadership again with myself, a trainer uh, who I've known for a long time called Tom Badario and Myers Barnes again. So it's not that confusing. I might have made it sound worse than it really is and more confusing, but there's three lanes, the sales, OSC, leadership, and each one of those we have experts ready to help you in each area. So uh, it's not all at once or anything like that. That, that would be uh, too chaotic. If you decide to come, you can easy, you can reach out to me with questions. I know it's a big investment. So email me or, or call. Um, but if you do decide to come because you're watching this webinar, you get an extra special incentive. Thank you, Anya, for that. And it's an extra $100. So there we go. So uh, that, that, that would work out well. And if you'd like some extra time and attention from us, just let us know we're here for you. So there we go. We talked about Myers already. Let's learn. It's not bad. We just spent the first few minutes there getting to know each other. Now let's introduce Leah Fellows, who, as you know, is really a, an uh, online sales counselor specialist. Are you ready, Leah? Yep, I am. And, and one other thing I want to tell you about the, um, the, the whole event is not only will it be two full days of online sales counselor training, but it, it, we're also going to be doing six weeks of group training after that. Six wow. Well, so once monthly, there'll be group Zoom, live Zooms for that. Oh, so if you have an online sales counselor and they want to get um, more information, I often feel like it's hard to absorb everything at an event like this. So we're going to take those six weeks to really kind of dig deeper into oh. the topics that we talked about at the event. So I just, <laughs> there's a lot of OSCs on here. We saw lots of AMs in there. If yeah. you personally want to up your game, even if your company doesn't want to do it, it's a perfect opportunity because you can invest in this program for two live days and then get those six weeks of webinars. And we will create a Facebook group and everything else from that so that you're really creating part, becoming part of a community. Yeah, so I just wanted you. to throw that out there as well. It's amazing. Um, and can, yeah. I mean, can I jump in? I'm so sorry. I'm piggyback what you're saying about investing in training. Because it, it's the perfect time to, to do that. Sometimes we get this mindset that our companies have to do it for us. If you're going to invest in yourself, then just, just let us know. I'll work with you. We'll work on a payment plan or whatever. Um, I've done that before, and it's always worked out. There's going to be a lady at the, uh, at, at, you know, at the retreat. Her name is Magda Asola. I did an interview with her. Uh, about, about a month ago. I met her in 2008 before that big downturn. She came to a program that, that I was involved in and paid her own way. And it was about the same exact investment. In fact, there was no, I guess, inflation hasn't kicked in. It was about the same thing. Uh, but anyway, she, she paid for herself and, and she was just beginning the industry. Fast forward five years in a row, she's Charlotte, North Carolina's number one salesperson in new homes. She sold 300 million in the last five years. She doesn't credit to the one training. She goes every year. She invests in herself every year. So, you know, if you're thinking of investing in yourself, then, then, let, then let us know. We'll work with you on a payment plan if that's what, what's comfortable. But the important thing is that, that you get trained now before the market be, be, it continues correcting. It gets tougher and tougher. We, we really are here for you. And we'll, we're bragging about you. You'll, you'll be the next Magda uh, a few years from now. So there's that. All right, let's get going. Yep, you can go ahead and start my first slide. So, so we're going to talk about how OSCs can create urgency and see strong and set strong appointments, right? And, and it's funny because if you're an online sales counselor listening to this and you've only been in the industry a couple of years, you've been trying to hold back the flood. <laughs> you, instead of creating urgency and setting strong appointments, no offense to you all out there, but you've probably just been kind of a pass-through 
setting really quick appointments and not necessarily getting to know your buyers because you've had so much, so many leads thrown at you. Everything's been appointment only for so long. And in some cases, you've had to try to slow that those people down because you didn't have enough homes to sell compared to the number of people demanding them. So you, if that is what you've been experiencing and all of a sudden things are changing for you, this is going to be really helpful to you today. So um, go ahead, Roland, you can change the next slide. Basically, OSCs really are that front line when beginning the customer journey. So if, if you're out there, if you're like Fred trying to decide what are the benefits, what are the value of this, an online sales counselor is that front line at the beginning of a customer journey. They're the ones that can be there for that fast first personalized response and start to build rapport, answer questions and, and set expectations, but they also have to ask questions. The goal is not to pass that lead off like a hot potato, but to set really strong appointments. And because when we set strong appointments, what we're doing is we're utilizing the time better for site agents. So site agents can spend less time with those buyers and convert those into sales. So the OSCs are doing a lot of that front end for anything that's coming through them. On, on site sales counselors still have to have their, their whole presentation meet, meet and greet and all of that, but there's a whole meet and greet and things that happen for OSCs as well. Um, so let's just talk about what setting that strong appointment is. Go ahead, Roland. Sorry, Roland's driving the, um, the train here. So thank you. Um, setting a strong appointment is about qualifying that lead and finding out their wants, needs, and desires. You have to be transparent in setting proper expectations for that buyer. So if you don't have anything available for six, nine, 12 months, an OSC can set that up at first, but still create urgency and why it's important to go out and fall in love with a model, right? Um, they're communicating pre-appointment, not just to the buyers, but a strong appointment means communicating with the site agents, right? So there's a give and take there and creating that relationship. So part of that qualification is making sure we ask those right questions up front. So going, going ahead and asking that, that right question up front. Um, I've actually come up with some questions that you as an OSC may encounter and Maybe you didn't really have a chance to deal with a lot of these before, because when the market slows down, when people become more fearful of what it's like to buy a house, they've got more questions. You've got to have more answers, right? Um, so if you get someone that wants a specific area, but say you're not building right then, you don't have what they want in that area at that time frame. You, you need to dig deeper and you need to ask them, what is it about that area that's appealing to you, right? So when we dig deeper and ask the next question, the deeper question, we start to get a better picture of who they are. If someone tells you they want a four bedroom house, that's great. You need to dig deeper as an OSC and say, tell me more. Tell me more about how you wanna use those rooms. Because for some people that four bedroom house may be like my home, we have four bedrooms because we need two home offices and you may have the right house to sell them that has office space or rooms that can be converted into offices. And if you don't ask that question, you don't know what's really important to them. So to pass that information on. Right. So these are some of the important questions. If, if no. Yep. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean that. No, <laughs> not yet. And a couple others are if, if somebody's asking for a, uh, you know, they, they say they're in a specific price range, right? It's, you need to find out as an OSC how they've come to that price range, especially right now in this market, okay? As an OSC, you don't want to cut someone off that says they're only in the 400s and you sell homes in the 550s and say, sorry, we don't have what you want and hang up right? You need to find out how they came to that, that number. Have you spoken with a loan officer, right? Have you, have you, do you know what you want to pay on a monthly basis? When you can find out these, you can better fit them in. And we'll talk more about that later, but now we can switch to question to these aren't scripted, 
right? These aren't scripted checklists that OSCs are going through. And it's really important to understand that online sales counselors have nine areas of qualification that they should be looking to get answers for before they set that strong appointment. Now, it doesn't mean you're always going to get all nine of these areas, right? But it's also not a checklist. It's more like painting a picture. That's why I've put it in a color wheel. I see it like a color wheel when I'm talking to online sales counselors because you have your primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, right? That's your area, your time frame, and your price range. These are three points of the triangle that are really important, but you need to find the wants, needs, and desires, the whys, the decision makers. Do they have a house to sell? What All these questions come out and I, but I really like to focus on the primary colors, which you can switch to the next, which brings us to what I like to call the buyer's triangle, okay? I kind of modeled it after a fire triangle. Anybody here ever um, have to take a firefighting course? When, when I was on sailboats, I used to work on sailboats and I actually had to go through firefighting 101. I was all in the entire outfit, you know, dragging hoses around a big wooden boat. I, I was in charge of firefighting. And so when you're looking at what it takes, <laughs> Leah, you're the best. Um, so if you're looking at what it takes to actually light a fire, you need three things. You need heat, oxygen, and fuel to light a fire. In order to set a strong appointment and be able to convey great information to your sales agents, you need area, price range, and time frame. But you need to know how movable that is, okay? When somebody tells you that they want to be in a certain area, time frame, or price range, I guarantee you that is always movable. It's always movable. And so the more you get back to the basics of rapport building, right, and we're back to the basics of rapport building, the more you're going to be able to dig into what that buyer means, needs. And I think, you know, when you, you talk about some of you may have heard Jeff Shore say you need to be coffee worthy, right? You need to have be coffee worthy to, to talk. Now that we have less leads out there, we have time to slow down and get to know all of these people. And that is what an OSC should be doing on their end. Again, it's not that hot potato, get them off the phone as quick as possible, but find out what makes them tick so we can set those strong appointments. We need to go back to being that empathetic listener and really asking why they want to move and discovering their pain points. That's where we get into digging three wise deep, right? The next digging three wise deep. So that pain point, I already showed you kind of getting a level two on some of those questions when we were talking about questions. But if you don't keep digging with that empathetic uh, idea in mind of getting to know that person, you may not know what their true desire is to move. My last house that I lived in in Maryland, I lived in a townhome community. I lived in a very tight knit community. And if you asked me in the beginning why I wanted to move, I might have told you, well, I want a single family home. If you asked me a little bit deeper, I might have said, well, I want to be closer to the city. But if you really bothered to get to know me, you would have found out I lived in a neighborhood full of toxic people. It was like the real housewives of Highland Farms, okay? And I got to the point where I didn't even want to socialize with these people anymore because they were so, so insular and not very nice. Aww. So if you found that out about me and then I gave you the objection of, oh, that house is too expensive or I'm not sure I want to move, you could use that information and not in a mean way, but in a, a counselor kind of way to say, how much longer can you really see yourself living in that community with those people? So you find these things out and you can move people off the fence and dig three wise deep and really get into that. So that's what helps you set appointments. But look, you're not just setting appointments with the site agent sometimes, and, and you can go ahead and move forward to the next one. Um, yeah, you're sometimes having to start out with setting appointments with lenders and knowing your finances, just like I talked about before. You don't want to just give a list of preferred lenders to your buyers that you're talking to. You want to set up that relationship with your preferred lender and know that it's happening and know that that meeting is taking place. So that's another tip I have for you in order to set those really strong appointments. 
Um, so next, you know, we want to make sure that we're not just throwing anything against the wall to see if it sticks. And I've I've definitely experienced uh, builders who think that the OSC should keep these leads very for a very short time, send them on over to the agents as soon as possible, find as little information as possible, just get the appointment set. That's not what we're about. We're about creating that relationship and making sure that everything we do is going to be very strong. Because when it's a strong, strong, and when it's a strong appointment, we all win, right? The builder wins, the buyer wins, the agent wins, the OSC wins. And that brings us to the secret sauce. Right. Ooh. Do you like do you like what I did there throwing tomatoes against the wall and then we're you making know, I tomatoes. saw that. Yeah, it's very subtle. You gotta watch this a few times and it <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. So, so there's the secret sauce for strong appointments really is teamwork, right? Together, everyone achieves more. And that teamwork is that team between online <laughs> and on site. So that's where it's very important. We see we we when we create a strong team and we're passing information back and forth, we're communicating with each other, then we have less leads that will fall through the cracks. And right now we have less leads. Most builders are experiencing less leads. So we have more time to work with these people and help and go back into our database, right? And this brings us to the very last point I wanna make, which is about creating a no lead left behind mentality, right? It's it, basically this mentality isn't just about trying to make sure we build the strongest appointments we can um, with those that are communicating with us, but also to continue that persistent, consistent process that online sales counselors should be adept at. They should know how to consistently and persistently follow up with people who are not communicating with them. And look, I know over the last couple of years, so many people were dropped like, dropped like hot potatoes, not just passed like hot, but dropped because they did not reply to the initial inquiry on an email or a phone call or anything. And that's not just for, for builders that don't have OSCs, but sadly I saw it for builders that did have OSCs because there's another um, thing that I do every year, which is a survey with Melinda Brody and company and with, um, with Denim Marketing. And we surveyed 50 builders across the country and we saw follow-up shrink big time this year. OSCs, there are more of them out there, but follow-up is not continuing on like it should be. And I can tell you from the last downturn that when we were persistent, consistent and built those relationships, we saw people who came in on year one convert on year two and three into a buyer. And an online sales counselor has to be willing to, to put in that time and do that long-term lead nurturing in order to convert those. So it's not always what you convert that's right in front of you, but what you're going to convert down the line by being persistent, consistent, and trying to create that relationship. So again, it's, it's more important than ever before. With strong processes, we create urgency, we create strong appointments, we create a team with our site agents, and we all win. And that's that's what I got. So perfect. I'm oh my pass goodness. it back to Roland for Amazing. that. Thank you so much. So really, I, I remember now when when we first chatted, uh, I saw you at the at the builder show and you were on a panel and you were talking uh, about OSC. And I, I remember then thinking, my goodness, she, she really knows what she's talking about. Leah really knows what she's talking about. And 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 just listening to you there in just twenty minutes. Uh, everything you said was right on the money. It's so authentic. And you can tell you've actually been there, done that, uh, which is so important. I mean, just a small detail of making an appointment to actually meet with the lender because people have a fear of that. You know, as a new home salesperson, if I really want to get the sale and, and the, the client was sort of circling the airport, never really moving forward, I figured out maybe it was a fear of financing and I would have the lender meet them in the, in the sales office privately or get on the phone in a private office. But those little details really, and three whys deep is, is wonderful. What's your real why? It's not transactional, right? It's emotional. And what's really motivating you, that whole sad story you told about having no friends in your neighborhood, I feel bad for you now. I have to, I, we'll have to give you a hug when we see you, but, but absolutely it can happen. Um, so that, but, but that, that, that is what we're gonna talk about. And so the idea of creating urgency, I'm gonna continue on if I may, but, but, uh, but to piggyback on that, the, the very first part of creating urgency is to know their why. 
and narrow it down and match them with something that might go away. So here we go. I'm going to talk about creating urgency, continue that, and introduce you to, to the idea of negotiation. There is the cover of, of, of my, uh, my new book, Mastery of Negotiation. It should be out January. We're hoping to have that out and ready. It's going to be smaller than this one. This one's 450 pages. This will be under 200. And it's just going to be absolute tactics that work on how to negotiate uh, and create a win-win. So, so there's that. Uh, let's keep moving forward. So before we get in, into how to negotiate, uh, the first thing that we said we promised is creating urgency. The main thing you can do, I'm just going to pick three tips here. The first one, of course, is to narrow down to one of a kind. So if you haven't narrowed down uh, with, with, with the client, uh, on which visit should it be? On the first visit, yeah, that's our goal. So on the first visit, if you haven't narrowed down to one of a kind, a home on a home site, or if it's multifamily on a view or condominium, um, you, you have to get that done. So the, the buyer sales pitch, maybe that they're, they're just looking, uh, but we can't afford to believe that. And so if you're listening with a pen, some of you might be driving around, so don't make notes if you're driving, that would be dangerous. But if you're at your desk, uh, then please make notes and write this word down hypothetically. So if the client says, oh, don't worry, Leah, I'm, I'm just looking, you go, I, I know you're just looking, but hypothetically, when would you think you're moving? Whatever, whatever they won't answer, make it a hypothetical question. I know you're just looking, but you know, let's say you said our homes are valued from the fours to the sixes, what do you have in mind? I don't know, we're just looking. Well, hypothetically, closer to four, or closer to six. Okay, and all of a sudden, when you make it hypothetical, people will give you answers. So we, we have to do better. We have less leads, right? So we can't afford to have a, super, a superficial process that ends early. We've got to get them out onto the site. So I talk about being deaf, if you will, to, to what they're not, not being pushy and rude, but let's just go look at a home site. Let's just go pick out that view. Then all of a sudden it's about something that, that they could lose. So sadly, in creating urgency, I believe it's, it's, it's the amygdala, the part of our brain that deals with fear. And so it's the fear of loss. So if you, if you don't get them in, onto a site, uh, they'll just think, well, okay, this is a nice idea one day if this all magically, hack, this magically goes together. Um, and, and so instead, let's go, when, once you've seen a home site and they like it, now there's a fear of losing something special. I always joke that beautiful view with the uh, power lines in the back so that kids can glow in the dark. So there it is. So they can grow giant pumpkins for pumpkin season. I'm just being foolish, of course. But get them out there and you'll see magic, magic things happen. If you're right, if you're listening with a pen, uh, your goal should be 90% of your clients on a first visit get to the site. If it's dark or it's bad weather, make that your reason for the appointment by all means. But just understand that if that part, because we haven't needed that part of the process um, when the market's been so strong, we've forgotten, we've given them a map to go just go pick something out and get in line well you can't do that anymore you've got to you've got to charm that home site and site and you shall write so that's one obvious thing the next thing is to narrow down to a price and then date all of your material here's an example of a recap form that i've used my whole career when i learned this 20 plus years ago um and so the, the, i've said it many times to those that work with me never negotiate on your feet always close at your seat so if you come back from having been outside looking at stuff and you're standing up, your body language is saying, well, see you, off you go, thanks, go, I'm hungry, there's a bagel in the fridge, I need to go eat it. But if you sit down and say, let's sit down and recap, now you're, you're taking them seriously, they can confide in you, they can talk about their butts, I would buy butt, interest rates are 6% or whatever, or I don't know how to buy a home. And then the idea is that you date it. You get, here's your home, here's the home site, here's some of the things you're thinking about in your home, if that's your process, uh, and this is the price. Maybe there's an incentive right now. There probably is. Most of you are back to incentives. So you write that down, and then you put, you put either today's date, which I believe is October 13th, 2022, or you could put a good through date. So quick question, what creates urgency? Is it the price or is it the date when the date when the price could change? It's the date. So consistently, I, I would do this with every single client that I'd bring back. And my goal was literally nine out of 10. Uh, I'd sit down, I'd, I'd write, I'd get to a bottom line price and even a monthly investment, which we can get into as well, uh, because that might change as well. There's definitely, it's a fear of the change. If I like your home, I like your home site, neighborhood finishes, you've come up with a price and even a monthly investment, and that might change. That's going to create some urgency, some momentum to move forward. The next idea, which is piggybacking up of that, is that we need to know our numbers now. And this is the app that I promised. I created an app 
about five years ago. No, I mean, it's something that my clients have always had. I've given it away for free uh, for those clients. They didn't care that much about it. Guess what? All of a sudden, the last four months, I, I, people love it because now you can you can bring it all the way down to a monthly investment. So uh, the, the one thing is to show a monthly investment before you turn it over to the mortgage company. Maybe a client doesn't even know, have any idea of what you're talking about. But here's something that, that I would like to talk about, which is amplify. Here it is. Number one rule of numbers, amplify savings minimize costs. So some of your builders are, are, are giving away buy downs, or, or uh, you, you might talk about a seven year arm or a 10 year arm. I've always called them seven year fixed. I know it's technically not what it's technically not the right phrase, but it's fixed for seven years, ladies and gentlemen. So it's a seven year fixed or a 10 year fixed. But, you know, th th that's how I've always explained it. Uh, anyway, uh, but the point is that, that if you're not showing the buyer the savings, how are they supposed to understand it? And so it's interesting. I, I work with a whole bunch of builders, and we talked about it yesterday, uh, that buyers just want money off the home, but they don't understand what a buy down does for them. So bottom line is this, on my app right here, I've got an example like this just last night. So it's current. Let's say your home is $575,000 with 20% down uh, on a 30 year loan. Uh, if, if, if the rate is 6% today and you buy it down by 1%, so that might cost your builder $10,000. And your clients, well, it's just 10,000. Uh, just take that off the price of the home. That's my impersonation of an ungrateful buyer, by the way. Oh, just give me whatever. However, if you buy that rate down by just 1%, look what it does. So monthly, it saves you 200. My glasses on for this, but I didn't memorize it. $288.55 a month. Well, that's something that might well move the dial. That's 300 bucks a month almost. But look at this. Over 30 years, you saved them $103,879. Does that make sense? So you can put that in the app. It literally takes as long as just to put, put numbers in and say, look, whatever you want, we have an incentive right now. You can go get a fireplace for free or have some fun bucks at our uh, design studio, or we have a buy down program. Can I show you what that would mean to you? And then you show them the savings. They go, oh, well, that's $103,000. That's a couple of, of college educations, perhaps, or that kind of stuff. So you, you want to make it real. So we've got to amplify savings, minimize expenses. So that's that. Uh, the app will do it for you. Email me, say free app, and we'll say we'll send you the information. Lastly, on creating urgency, uh, incentives are back as we know. So uh, my quote, which I love, is incentives don't make buyers out of non-buyers. They just make real buyers buy more quickly. So it's a tipping point. You, you, you're not going to, we're not trying to bribe our way into a sale. That's not ethical and it wouldn't work and it would look desperate. But if they like your home, so everything that Leah said was right on the money, what's their why? Three whys deep. You understand what motivates them. You found a home. You found a home site. You know the finishes they like. Uh, they love the community, the builder. Everything is going well. So if I like all of that and you've sat down and you've priced it for them and that works, and then you say, by the way, there's an incentive right now for the remaining three or four days or the next three homes or whatever, uh, that could be that tipping point. So it's the icing on the cake. It's not the cake itself. Does that make sense, everybody? So there's different ways. There are two types of incentives, and, and a lot of builders that, that I work with have both, by the way. One is a front-end incentive that's published, and then we have a sort of non-published back pocket. So uh, let, I'll talk about both very briefly. Um, the whole idea, yeah, go ahead. I just want to say, because I know yeah. that online sales counselors out there are probably like, they get asked all the time when someone calls in, what's your incentives? What, what, are, your, what are your specials? What are you offering? And these tools are really for the site agents to use to close, okay. like, like what Roland is saying, sure. that you can't turn a, a, you know somebody who's not a buyer into a buyer with incentives, you just move it. So one of the best responses you can do as an OSC when someone asks that question is to say, that's a great question. Each one of our site agents has a different, has something different depending on what you're interested in. Perfect. So the best thing is, is to get you out to meet with them. I love it. So that you can figure out because it would be ridiculous if I told you one thing and that wasn't the house that you were interested in. Very so, nice. Good. So OSCs, there's a lot of OSCs on here. That's how Good. you get the incentive question or yeah. the, and you say that is a perfect time to get it out to an appointment. Perfect. I, I think it, it, it's awesome. I have some some scripts and whenever I have my scripts, I, ha I always have a caveat that this is an example only. Don't worry about saying it word for word. So I have a different way of saying exactly what you just said, Leah. And I agree entirely that, that, that you want to use back pocket incentives. Here it is as a closing tool, not an opening statement. Not, hey, come on in, there's $20,000 a day off of whatever, because that just shows fear. Save it uh, till they get out on site and work with a, with a, a new home salesperson, narrow down to one of a 
the kind. Now at the closing table, when you're recapping and you share with them what, what they could have for moving in that time frame, that has a lot more meaning and, and that could be the, the, the reason to go ahead. So it's perfect. So uh, what we have to remind ourselves is not just why my builder and my community, but, but why now? So if you have a published incentive, then, then here are some basic rules. Uh, it has to have a reason. So grand opening, grand closeout, full savings, whatever it needs to be. Uh, it has to have terms, like going ahead by a certain time, maybe using our lender, it's certainly if it's a financing one. Expiration date. Again, if you're listening with a pen or you want these slides, email us, we'll send you the slides. Uh, it's fine. Uh, but the expiration date is really what's going to drive the urgency. And then in writing so that they understand that it's tangible and it's real. The urgency factor is if they like the home and the incentive resonates with them, the fact that it's going to go away, either real or implied. By implied, I mean a grand opening. Well, when's that really over? When we decide it's over. Well, the next five sales of the company sales in the month of October, not by the October 31st. Then there's a real fear of it, of it going away. You know, in a friendly way, as I said, uh, as, you know, it's not you don't want to be pushy. You want to pull them through the process. Um, if you're doing a non-published incentive, a back pocket, we're going to get into how to negotiate anyway. Um, but I want to make sure that, that, that you set clear boundaries with your manager, your manager and the salespeople. And it's just a way to create excitement and protect profits, not to give away profits. And so uh, the, but the, the goal is to negotiate while the buying temperature is high. Does that make sense? So we, 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 we got so used, I think, to the live to leave if they wanted to and they go online and buy or whatever. Well, those days have changed a lot because you want to create that emotion while they're in front of you. So bring them in and work it out. All right. So that's that. Um, something I just threw in which I thought would be relevant because so many of my builders are now finding that they have uh, an inventory all of a sudden that they didn't have before. And so we're back to sort of a, a normalized market. So if you have homes that aren't selling, uh, here we go, this is a, a, what it might really look like to, oh, to the buyer, but it look, look nicer. I've got a little map. So you analyze, and I did this my whole career as a manager, uh, M is for marketing. What does the marketing look like? Including MLS, by the way, and Zillow and, and checking what that what's going on there and updating it and updating your pictures, et cetera. The, the appearance. Uh, how does it look? Maybe it needs a coat of paint. Maybe it just needs some landscaping, not a whole overhaul to get it to sell. And then lastly, pricing and promotion. You need to have a pricing strategy in place. We can't afford to be overpriced anymore if that's what you have been. And so either adjusting the price or having a promotion, whatever you feel is, is, is relevant to your market. Uh, but have a map and go out and, and look at each, each one of your inventory home. You don't have to have the same incentive. You can have aged inventory uh, or homes that you want to promote more than others. But I found that's a useful little technique. Sound good? All right. Introduction to, to negotiations. So I've got my notes here. In my book, we're going to have over 20 of these puppies. But today, we're, we're going to, uh, we're just going to deal with eight in the time that we have today uh, that I can share with you and come to the retreat. We'll deal with all of them uh, for you in that program as well. So the first idea is to create a win-win. Uh, Dr. Covey describes it this way, if I can read it. It's a belief in the third alternative is not your way or my way, it's a better way or a higher way. Bottom line is this, we, 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 we want to create the sale, right? So um, a lose-lose is that, that, that nobody buys. They come in and, and I did work with a builder just recently that said rather proudly, well, we don't negotiate. Well, the buyer didn't, there was a buyer wanted to buy, tell that story better. The buyer said that they wanted to buy something quite expensive. Uh, the, the builder said, well, we, we just don't negotiate because they thought it was three months ago, perhaps. Um, and the buyer left and it was a lose-lose. We don't want that. Uh, a a win-lose would be that the buyer gets a good deal, but, but our builders are unhappy. We're giving away too much. A lose-win is the other way around. So, so uh, you know, the, the buyer doesn't feel like you, you felt you dealt with them fairly. So the choreography of all of the, the outcomes Outcome, beginning with the end in mind, to quote Covey again, is we want to create a win-win situation. We want to get the sale. We want the buyers to look like this picture where they just feel so happy uh, and they feel like they want a little bit, something extra from us, but we all know that that, that, fit, well, fit, that fit well within our parameters and the paradigm that we had laid out ahead of time. We just made them feel special. So there's, there's the goal. Um, the, the next rule is always in person. And so uh, this is hard for you. And, and I, I didn't realize this, you know, I'm, I'm always reminded as a coach that, that I deal with so many different markets. So when I sold homes in Florida and was sales director, normally realtors expect the, the, the builder to, to work directly with the clients. But I know that quite a lot of you have realtors that want to negotiate on behalf of the buyer and that's done in a remote way. Well, that doesn't work. So it, it's just, you, 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 there's no emotion, right? If, if your buyer is at home uh, watching the news, is anybody ever happy? 
I could just name news channels and our heads explode. I was thinking about that. If I just named three different news channels right now, oh, how dare you mention those names? That's so, you know, on PC. Because people are miserable right now. They're unhappy. But where can they be happy? In front of us, right back in our model. So you got to get them back. It just doesn't work if you're texting, emailing. If you're emailing or, or texting, it's about one thing and one thing only, which is what? It's the price. They don't live in the price. They live in a home. So bring them back. And, and I only train what I've done myself. So here's an idea of a script. But again, this is what I have said. Uh, you, you can amend it, but the concept's very solid. So sales genius will be happy uh, to, uh, we'd be, we, we would we would be happy to, to talk over the phone about this. However, we'd hate to, for there to be a confusion. Or I'm just not allowed. That's what my sales was. We're just not allowed uh, with this afternoon at 4.30 be better or tomorrow morning. Let's get together. We'll work it out which is what I, I said exactly. And by the way, you will get screamed at. I've got screamed at my whole career by realtors. Uh, that, oh, you're going to tell me. You said, well, I don't know. I need them to come in, make sure we understand what home, what home site, what do they want in that home? And then we'll work it out together. We're going to, we're, we'll, we'll make it work. But you got to bring them back. So the first rule, it's buying is in motion, but by logic, the, the highest emotional place you can bring them, the hotspots are going to be in that home. I know it's tough, but, but hey, these, your buyers are making offers. If we're not converting those to sales, then we're doing, we need to do something different. And again, the training that Leah and Anya and I provide isn't for the sales we're getting. It's the sales that, that, that we could be missing right? So if you're getting all the sales you need, fantastic. If you're missing any, well, these tips will definitely help you. So there we go. Um, the next thing, exactly what, what, uh, what Leah was saying, find out what the hot buttons are, find out what their why is. And I've got three different types of buyers, a family buyer, uh, young, younger couple, first time buyer, older couple where they're sort of right sizing. So it, 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 find out what's important to them. If it's not going to be price, they want something thrown in and something reasonable, then the old phrase, if I could, would you, would apply. So if I could get you the window treatments and the appliances, would you go ahead today? If I could get a lower interest rate, would you go ahead today? If they say no, then that's fine. Then they can leave. But if that's, I don't want you to negotiate and then they leave, that, that's not what we're going to be doing. It's if, you would, if I could get that, would you go ahead? And then we'll talk about how to put that together. But finding out what the hot buttons are. I used to, I, I love landscaping and I worked for 10 years in one community in Florida and I was always giving away trees, little trees that I love myself. So I probably would, but people were happy and my boss was like, why the heck did you give away? I don't know, I just love trees. It's, they were like Hong Kong orchids and beautiful uh, flowering trees that maybe that was my own. Uh, my own thing, but there we go. Ahead of my time being green. What can I say? Um, if they want to negotiate price, here's some tips. First of all, let me move my uh, screen around. First of all, we'll find out what, what they had in mind and then how they arrived at that. So I'm going to spend a lot more time at the retreat going through this because we're going a little quickly to get you out on time here. But for example, if we're at 500, um, if they offer 400, that's a low offer. But what if they're thinking 490 or 495? There's a big difference, correct, in our mindset. So we're, we're going to say, no, we don't negotiate. And we're going to build value for why we don't do that. But if we are going to then say, well, well, help me understand what do you have in mind? We'd like to figure it out. And then how did you arrive at that? Well, I know how they arrived at it. It's a round number. Very rarely is it, is it because it's real. They, 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 want to, uh, they, they just want to win something. So the next tip is start high, stay high, come down slowly. And look, I'm not talking about these things. Look at that. Can you see that? There we go. That's my little joke of the day. Thank you for laughing. Okay. I wasn't sure. I'm a little shot. The little gummies over there. When I say start high, stay high, come down slowly. What I'm saying is, and I'll give you tips on how to do this in the next 10 minutes, is, is don't come down by big leaps and bounds. Yeah, the first the first amount that you come down is really important to set the stage that hey we don't negotiate we want to make you happy we want to work with you so come down in little little tiny amounts and it, it, you'll, you'll see again you, you might get screamed at I mean at the retreat I tell a story of, of this home this home right here I sold this home um, I, I was a selling sales director my salespeople away we end up selling it for about two point six something million but the original offer was was it, it, they, they offered two million we were at two point eight something and they came at two million so uh we we, we could have we, we we could have ignored it but uh we, we came down by about 16 or 17 thousand and i got screamed at by the rule oh, oh, oh. uh, but guess what their next counter was two and a half million they came up five hundred thousand dollars just based upon our little tiny uh amount so that that's probably more extreme than most of you will ever have to encounter but i used everything i've ever learned from from all the great trainers on, on negotiation so there we go so um the mo one of the most important things i teach i learned this from an amazing uh sales director i had his name is neil and it was it's a checklist so check this out. When people say that they want to negotiate, they probably think you mean price. Price is number 12 on this list. 
And I learned to do this with clients. I'd sit down and say, so the first thing is that you're, you're saying that you would like to negotiate. My first question is, will you go ahead today? If they say yes, we keep going. If they say no, then no worries. Let's get back together when, when you are ready. Um, let's, I want to verify the home, the home site. What are we including? Because maybe I think they want luxury vinyl plank in every room, but they just want it where we give it. And therefore, I don't have to negotiate. Um, cash or financing? Financing, are they approved? Um, is, is, how much is the deposit to accompany the proposal? Uh, what's the total deposit going to be? Uh, closing or move-in date? Uh, anyone else involved in the transaction? In other words, am I going to do this? And then they tell me that, well, their, you know, their partner has to come in. We're going to start all over again. Uh, anything else that, 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 that we should know? Any special conditions? And then last but not least is price. So once I've got, and, and this literally is a checklist that my salespeople that work, that, that I was director of sales, work with, they, they would go through the checklist and then we'd get to price and all of this stuff then becomes tradable. So once you know that, then you can give the get. So if I'm going to give a concession, which I'm more than happy to, where it's part of our plan to create a win-win, then I might come back and say, well, we might consider it if I get a larger deposit or a faster move-in date, or we just want to verify you have the funds to close or a faster mortgage approval, maybe 24 hours, not a week or something, or let's remove any other contingencies or that kind of stuff. Does it make sense? So you, 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 you want to trade it. In my mind, whether they did it or not didn't almost matter is the fact that I made it feel real that if we're going to come down by this amount, I want something back. And they go, oh gosh, this is really, I'm really working hard to get this concession. So they're much happier than just rolling over and give it to them quickly, right? I see you guys shaking your head. Thank you for the support. This one is hilarious and it works. It, it, it works so beautifully. Uh, again, I, I don't know who created this, but it's genius. Count it with an odd number. So why? Because it feels more real. It feels like you actually created it. Chris Voss wrote an amazing book. Anya and I both agree that we, that we love this. Never split the difference. And, and it's absolutely right. There's nothing in the world. Please don't split the difference. There's no, uh, there's no accountant that ever said, hey, just come up with a number and split it. So instead, uh, here's an example. Let, let's say that your home is 465. The buyer offers 420. And let's say that, 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 that your, your sales manager is giving you $5,000 to work with. So that's what you, if you give away 5,000 up front, what's going to happen? They'll just want more. So instead, you'd sort of say this, and I've said this and got screamed at, but then sold the home. Um, good news, if we can move in a week earlier or get pre-approved today or, get, or work with, or what's the other one, increase the deposit or whatever it would be, uh, we, we would consider 463758 So that's a concession, I think about what $1,300 approximately. There we go. They go, oh, are you crazy? Everyone else would give away stuff. But all of a sudden, they realize you are actually working hard on it, and it's an odd number. And so probably their next count is going to be 445, 450. They're going to move up quite considerably, because you came down in a small amount, and you came in an odd number. It's subtle stuff, right? You have to have the heart for it. Not everybody does. But if you do, then I just want you to be really good at it. And then finally, um, my last idea we're going to share today is, 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 is don't commit. Because if you commit too quickly, uh, they feel like they, 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 they could have got more from you. Oh, that's great. We'll take 5000 off. I'm sure that, that'll be great. Uh, they'll feel like they, they could have got more. They might get buyer's remorse. They, they won't trust you. They're like, oh, I've been negotiating with you. So instead, it's really a, a, an important technique to have a higher authority. And so this is what it would sound like. My manager says, let's go ahead and put this together, write it up. Uh, it looks good, but they said write it up. But she wants to make sure there are no surprises. That makes sense. So, and this is from the trenches. This isn't something you might read in a book from somebody that hasn't sold a home before, but having sold over a thousand homes, almost a billion dollars worth myself, uh, this is real speak where you'd say, let's put it together. It looks pretty good, but my manager wants to, wants to review it, make sure there's no rises. Then the buyer feels what? Hey, I won. You know, you have to remember to call them the next day. Don't, don't just put it away. And, and I've done that where I've just been off the next day and forgot to, 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 to uh, let them know that they, they've got the sale, the, the deal they wanted. But, you know, one of the things I didn't get to say is that re people are negotiating. It's a game. They want a good game. They want to feel like they won something, not in a pushy, st stressful kind of way, but in a way that's positive and gives them the feeling that they're, they're a little extra. So here we go. Uh, was that helpful? Some, some, okay, good. It's fun stuff. I've tried to, I've tried to take some of the best techniques and, and apply it to new home sales. So here's a quick recap. Uh, let, let's create a win-win situation. That's our goal. Let's focus on selling a home. We're not doing this not to. So let's not be cocky and pushy. We don't negotiate and, blah, and they buy a lease. That doesn't make any sense. It's a, it's a but. It's one of the best buying buts you can ever have. You know, are, are, are you negotiable? That's a buying sign, right? We love big buts because it means we get big sales out of it at the end of the day. Um, always negotiate in person. That's going to be tough because you're going to tell realtors, 
we're not allowed to do it over the phone. You're going to bring them in. We'll make it worth your while. Uh, but by, by the way, on, on this home here that I put back up here, um, we, we um, the, the, the realtor, who was very delightful, I want, in case she's listening, um, she was a little, uh, bless her heart, she was great, but she screened at me at least five times because it took almost a month to get this home sold. We did sell it for about 2.6 and change. Um, it took two weeks to close and it was as is, but we kept getting stuff back. And I hand delivered her a check for over $90,000. I mean, I delivered it to our office and we had a little celebration champagne. Uh, so she got over the whole thing because it worked. It just you just gotta you just gotta be patient with it. That's all. Always so that and that was always in person. Understanding hot buttons. I didn't even get into disc and their personality style. That's a whole nother area we have to adjust for. Start high, stay high, come down slowly. Put away the gummies. We're talking about negotiation. Clean, clean up your thought process there. Uh, a, a technique that not many people would have known without training is to have a checklist. So you write things down. The last item is price, not the first item. Get their focus off of, of the price and onto the emotion of, of what they're really buying. Give to get. If you're going to give a concession, try to get something back from them to make it feel like it's real. And it, it improves the sale. Come back with an odd number and then don't commit at the end. There we go. Yeah, I love um, the example that you showed with the calculator that shows how much money they would be saving because yes. you know, if you think about it, if you have an incentive of 10K, yeah, most buyers really think like take it off the sales price. But if you can show them oh, how good. it's going to affect them on a monthly basis, a year, yes. over a lifetime, I mean, that's huge right now. So I think that's one of the best incentives you can offer is the buy down. It's, it's, it's really a shame because our builders, most of our builders are working very hard to work with their banks. They're buying a certain amount of money that they can buy down. It's costing them a lot. And on the frontline sales, if we're not communicating it effectively, it's a waste of, it's a waste of money. And it's a, it's a big savings. You know, you can take 10,000 and turn it into a hundred thousand dollars of savings if explained properly. So that's awesome. Yeah. All right, then. Um, action equals I act on. So make your action plan from today. Take three items uh, that Leah and I talked about and commit to them. You know, don't try to do everything. It's not usually the way it works. But commit to, to a few things. And then again, you've got our email here. We would love to see you at the retreat. Uh, and Hugo has a special saving for you. So as I said, email us. Uh, here we go. Here's our contact info. Uh, and there we are. So shall I stop sharing and go back to being more human here? Here we go. And also, I just want to say out there, you know, yeah. if anybody, if any OSC that's on here or anybody that's thinking of hiring OSCs just wants to utilize, I have, I do so much free stuff. I mean, here's an example. Uh -oh. I have, I have free consultations on my website. If you want to grab a cup of coffee over Zoom with me and talk to me about, you know, what you're trying to accomplish, feel free to reach out Definitely. and I'll try to do my best to point you in the right direction. I mean, uh, like these guys said, I've been in online sales forever. I'm a trainer. I, I help builders strategize, hire, uh, create their programs from scratch, evaluate existing programs to yeah. see how they're working and how they can work better. So, you know, I, I always welcome you to come in and just reach out to me. I, I don't mind just having a discussion with you. Oh. It's not going to cost you like hundreds of dollars. No, right. Exactly. Value. No, it's great. And I, I think okay, if, they, if I can jump in, that, that's wonderfully said um, that, that all of us feel the same way. I've, there's, there's been people on these webinars that I've met that have written to me uh, that are just getting in the business. There's a, a young lady called Ashley Plunkett. I don't know if you're there today, Ashley, uh, but you've been on a few of these and you actually, I think we, I gave you, you, you won a free book and you were just beginning your, your, your whole career in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, she, and she loved the book and she wasn't, I don't think she was even actually officially, she was sort of an associate. Uh, she showed her boss, her boss went and bought books for everybody. Uh, I think it's Dale Horton in Fort Wayne. Uh, and anyway, and now she's, she just got promoted to OSC. Uh, she wanted to come to our training, but she's going through their own training. She'll come, she'll work with us in the future. But I've had many emails back and forth and it's just a thrill. That's what we're in it for. We all start, we all start at the beginning and to see you guys blossom and grow. I have an interview this week with somebody that, that wants to become a, a, a salesperson. So we're absolutely, uh, you know, just please pick all of our brains. We're, we're absolutely happy to help you. If you don't invest in yourself, how can you expect anyone else to invest in you? That's the saying go. I love. I've always invested in myself throughout my career. I've always bought books, um, you know, invested in courses on my own money. And I tell you what, it's been the best decision ever. You'll never regret spending money on furthering yeah. your own education. So thank yeah. you guys so much for joining us today. And let me see. Oh, okay. Well, we got somebody. Felicia signed yeah. up for the retreat. Awesome. Oh, great. 
just now? Yes. Uh, looks like, yeah, she signed up. I'm not sure if just now, but she says she oh, okay, up, so she's excited to um, Leah, yeah. chat with Leah. Good. Awesome. So, we can't wait to see yeah, you. We'll so you guys, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to have you on here. Again, check out um, the website if you want to learn more about the retreat and be sure to use your discount code ANUGO to save some money. And you guys, we're going to be spending uh, celebrating my birthday there too. So yes. be sure to bring your party again. with you because we'll be ready to, to party. So uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, appreciate your time. And we'll see you probably next month. I'm sure we'll be hosting um, another webinar. So, and uh, see everybody soon. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. Right. We look forward to seeing you. Bye. Bye. Take care.